when you can actually see your profit for the year in, in dollars and cents, you, it, it gets you more in the notion of selling corn, knowing that I can lock in a $50,000 profit or whatever the profit is, you want to lock it in. If I know I can make that much profit in a year, I will be in business next year. Good afternoon, welcome to Grain TV. My name is Cody Bills, this is Logan Burgess. Today is July 15th, a Tuesday. We had the market here very mixed, both between commodities and between delivery periods. Look at corn for September, trading down seven and a half cents. Uh, new crop corn down six and a half cents. Uh, soybeans for old crop down 16 and a half with new crop unchanged. Wheat in Chicago trading unchanged and uh, uh, December delivery up only a half penny here. Now Logan, we did have NOPA crush numbers. Uh, it is interesting interesting when you look at old crop stocks here, which is what mm -hmm. this would affect, uh, you know, really we had a very sharp sell-off. Is that because of these numbers? You know, I don't think it was, Cody. We saw uh, the market really trading quite a bit lower coming into the report. After the numbers were, were released, we actually saw this market retrace a little bit of the losses that we saw coming out of the overnight session. Could have been a lot of uh, bear, uh, bull spread unwinding in today's trade, but let's take a look here at the NOPA crush numbers that were reported. Uh, in terms of the June crush, we saw 118.7 million bushels reported crush. Uh, that was about 800,000 bushels on the light side, so a little bit of a negative factor there. Really the only positive number that we saw out of today's report was the stocks figure, 1.847 million uh, pounds reported there for June oil stocks. Uh, and that was a little bit lighter than what traders were expecting. So it seems like there still is good demand uh, for soy oil in the U.S., but maybe crushers uh, don't have quite the same incentive that they did a couple months ago, uh, really largely due to the price action that we saw there in May coming into June. Absolutely. And just to give you some context here, the May crush numbers, uh, when we were looking at those, we were coming down from 128 uh, million bushels crushed uh, in, in May. That was, uh, and, and we were expecting, and, and most analysts were expecting that, that we see the number of bushels here retreat this month simply yep. uh, due to the fact that soy uh, meal the prices were higher. We expected a little bit of demand destruction as a result of yeah. that, uh, and, and we ended up coming out a little shy of analyst expectations. Yeah. Now, Cody, for producers right now, though, really the big story is this November contract. We're getting a lot of calls in the office for people that may be uh, more uh, undersold than what they like to be at this point in the marketing year, especially considering the price action that we've seen since the June 30th acreage report. Uh, right now, we're looking at a daily chart of that November contract, and in the last two days trade action, we did have some indications that we could be seeing a little bit of a bottom here. Can you kind of walk through kind of the discussion that you and I had before the show today? Uh, what are some things to keep an eye on and what uh, what might we see here out of this bean market moving forward? Sure. Well, first of all, technically, when you look at this, it is a little bit oversold. You look at the RSI on the bottom, we are in an oversold state. The other thing that was interesting is really on the WASDI report when it was released, I didn't see anything very, very negative for new crop. Uh, you know, no new news, uh, especially after that WASDI report. You know, they didn't adjust any sort of acreage. They didn't adjust uh, any sort of uh, yield there. And, and as a result of that, we came in right about on par with analyst expectations, yet we sold off very sharply. Yep. Uh, you know, we finally found a little bit of a bottom retraced. Yesterday was a very muted trade, nothing significant. But today we traded down, kind of retested those bottoms. And, and the, the trade action going into the close, I thought was very positive. Last three hours, uh, we really kind of rallied back and erased any of the losses that we had earlier on in the day. So I look at this and I say, this is very positive here. I'm not necessarily saying that I'm bullish, that I'd want to go long, but most producers out there are long right, right. now, uh, are long at some capacity. And I would be looking at this and saying, all right, so what are my price targets if we do get a bounce? And this is what I used. Uh, I used the Fibonacci retracement going yep. from the highs uh, right before we broke to the lows that we saw here uh, on, uh, on Friday. And what you'll see is that back on June 3rd, we did have a little bit of a gap. It also happens to line up with that 38% retracement. So if we get up right around that 11.33, 11.32 uh, price area, I think that that's an area that you'd want to be looking to make some sales if we get a bounce up into yep. that spot. Absolutely. If you have any questions about that, feel free to call the office here at 877-472-4607. Additionally, if you want to take a look at the trading platform that we're using here on Grain TV, uh, you can call our office or visit us online at grainhedge.com. We have a bunch of great trading 
trading platforms available here that are great for the desktop computer and on mobile devices. If you're not quite content with your current brokerage relationship and want to see if you can lower the cost uh, of placing trades right now on futures and options, feel free to call our office number is 877 472-4607, as I said. Coming down the pipe here for the grain market, tomorrow we're gonna to be getting the EIA ethanol numbers out. Thursday's export sales day, and we'll be here back on Grain TV reporting on both of those. Thanks for joining us on a Tuesday. We'll see you tomorrow.